never imagined that you pirates would make it this far. You are a frightening man. However, I am the best swordsman in CP9. Don't take me lightly. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we will be examining everybody's favorite long-nosed assassin, Kaku. Kaku is a very honest, hard-working, and fun-loving character. Or at least that's how he is introduced to us during the Water 7 arc. Apart from his strangely rectangular nose, Kaku's most immediately defining trait is that despite the fact that he is a mere 23 years old, he speaks like an old Japanese man, using terms like washi, meaning I, rather than ore or even watashi, meaning the same thing, but modern. Kaku is exceptionally intelligent and was able to become a master shipbuilder of Dock 1 in the prestigious company Galela over a mere five years. In this capacity, Kaku was the shipwright assigned to evaluate the condition of the Going Merry when the Straw Hats approached Galela in order to repair their vessel. And as a result, he was the character who delivered the heartbreaking news that Merry was unrepairable due to its broken keel and would have no chance of reaching the next island in the Grand Line. However, as alluded to, Kaku's life as a shipwright is in fact a clever ruse, as he was actually a member of a world government cell known as Cypherpole 9. The agents contained within this cell were all specialists in a vast array of disciplines, which were generally applied to missions of espionage or assassination. In this particular case, Kaku was sent to infiltrate Water 7 with three other members of CP9, in order to obtain the blueprints for the ancient weapon Pluton, which was suspected to be held by the mayor of Water 7, Iceberg. As part of this task, Kaku had a pivotal role in facing off against and falsely incriminating the Straw Hats for the attempted assassination of Iceberg. This mission eventually culminated in the betrayal of the Galela company to obtain a set of blueprints held by Iceberg, which turned out to be fake. Having revealed themselves, the agents then adjourned to the sea train, traveling back to the island of Any Slobby having captured Nico, Robin, and Frankie. As a member of CP9, Kaku is a master of all six Rogushiki techniques, but he particularly favors the use of Rankyaku, which makes perfect sense because Kaku also happens to be a very proficient swordsman. He uses two blades in each hand, as well as his legs to perform Rankyaku, making Kaku a patron of Yontoru, meaning four sword style. Or at least this was the case prior to his return to any slobby. Upon his return, Kaku was offered a devil fruit, and although he seemed reluctant to consume it at first, he did eventually eat it after some encouragement from Rob Lucci. And it just so happened that the devil fruit he ate was the Ushi Ushi no Mi model giraffe. This fruit is a fantastic Zoan type that gives the user the ability to transform into a giraffe, as well as a giraffe human hybrid, which seems both hilarious and ridiculous at first. In fact, this was pointed out on numerous occasions by fellow CP9 member Jabra, who could not stop laughing when he first saw Kaku in giraffe form. And this revealed a nice little detail about Kaku's personality, which is that he gets embarrassed rather easily and pretty poorly tries to cover it up. In this case, immediately declaring to Jabra that he loves giraffes. However, his new power was not to be underestimated because his giraffe form is actually surprisingly devastating when combined with Kaku's mastery of the Rokushiki. Arguably his most powerful attack in giraffe form, uses his newly elongated neck to conduct a 360 degree Rankyaku strike, which in the series easily sliced the Tower of Law in half. And so during the events of any slobby, Kaku notably fought against his natural opponent, Rowan Oazora. Although this was a bit of a weird fight because throughout most of the battle, Kaku was still getting used to his new Devil Fruit abilities and invented multiple strangely named attacks on the spot, like Pasta Machine. However, eventually Zoro proved to be victorious and delivered a message from Kaku's former Galila colleague Pauli that he was fired. Kaku then replied that that was a shame and expressed that he generally enjoyed being a carpenter. Zoro then jokingly tried to soothe Kaku by saying that he could always work in a zoo. Kaku would then remain out of action for the rest of the Any Slobby arc. However, he did pop up again during the CP9 Incident Report cover story. This story generally follows CP9 doing some rather mundane things like Kaku using his giraffe form as a children's slide to raise money for Rob Lucci's medical bills. However, the agents do eventually sail to their homeland and see a new generation of CP9 being trained. The cover story ends with CP9 defeating the Marines who were sent to capture them and an ominous warning being sent to their former director Spandam that they are coming for him. Him next. And this is the last official appearance of Kaku in the series thus far. However, it is heavily implied that after the time skip, he has become a member of CP0, a cipher pole cell directly under the control of the world nobles. Kaku was never physically seen in the manga, however, his distinctive old man speech patterns do pop up when Rob Lucci was speaking to somebody over a Denden Mushi. 
so it's pretty safe to assume that it's Kaku. All right, time for an emergency edition. This One Piece 101 was written, recorded, and edited prior to a certain recent manga chapter coming out. So if you don't want any spoilers, then just mute your audio until this notice goes away. Ready? Three, two, one, spoiler time. Recently, it was confirmed that Kaku is indeed a fully fledged member of CP0, having made an appearance during the Reverie arc alongside Rob Lucci and Stussy. He now sports a majority white attire, as well as a fluffy top hat. Some more fun facts about Kaku. Kaku's birthday is August 7th. As in Japanese, the number eight can be pronounced as ha, while the number seven can be pronounced as na. Put them together and you have hana, which depending on how it's written can mean nose. Apparently Kaku is a living lie detector machine and is able to tell whether or not a person is telling the truth by holding their wrist and measuring the speed of their pulse. Despite his incredibly serious demeanor, Kaku is actually a very good sport and took his loss to Zoro in good humor. To match Kaku's old-timey style of talking in the English dub, Funimation often have Kaku say old-fashioned expressions like two shakes of a lamb's tail and one of my personal favorite words, skedaddle. And finally, a truly useless fact, above each of Kaku's eyes are a mere three eyelashes. And that pretty much does it for Kaku. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.